So then I started to dabble in investment. I'm a multimillionaire. You know, 90% of my net worth is in Bitcoin. Does that scare you ever? By you know 2031, I mean, I could really do whatever. Yeah. What's going on guys? Austin Zayback here with another video and I am with Colin Yerkeson. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, okay. got it. A very special guest. And this will be a really, really cool podcast because Colin is somebody that we used to work together actually a couple of years ago. And since then, okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of screenshots on the screen. He has absolutely blown up, okay, on social media. He's doing all kinds of different stuff such as cryptocurrency. I think you even do some credit stuff in the credit repair industry, yeah, if I'm not e mistaken. E-commerce and I'm just excited to kind of jump in. If you're an entrepreneur, you're somebody that wants to become an entrepreneur, or you're interested in any of the topics that are kind of listed, you saw in the thumbnail and the title, then this will definitely be a phenomenal podcast for you. So definitely stay tuned to the end. And Colin, I appreciate you coming by, man. Dude, thank you, bro. I'm yeah. super excited to be here. Full circle now on Full the Full circle. Um, I actually was just driving around in my parents' car and I was uh, visiting the coffee shop mm -hmm. I used to work at, just went to my apartment right now, <laughs> taking videos. Yep. Literally, it feels like yesterday. Dude, you posted a story. I'll, I'll put it on the screen for everybody to see, but I literally forgot, like, I didn't forget, but it, it dawned on me when you posted that, uh, it was like a memory or whatever on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. And, you know, you were sitting right over there in this office that we're in Connie right now. Me the yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And dude, it's just crazy, man. And it, honestly, like, it's really, really, it's like humbling, it's motivating, it's inspiring, you know, yeah. to see people like you in such a short period of time go from, you know, back then to where you're at now. And it just, it shows me every single day that like, man, like, you know, um, not only did we have impact on people, yep. but also like I have a lot of work to do and I have a lot of growth to do and I'm still learning and growing and evolving. And it's just a constant reminder that like, you know, you, you always say, right, like you want to see people do better than you and then they do and you're like, damn, that's actually really cool. And it's like to see. So um, I'm excited to jump into it, man. So walk, walk us through maybe, you know, yeah. back then you were in an interesting situation, right? It was, uh, how old were you at the time when, when you were working here? 23. 23. Yep. Okay. So you were young. So you're 25 now? 20, 25. Yeah. 25. And you know, your life then looked a whole heck of a lot different than it looks right now, right? So different. So what, what how did you end up in that situation in, in a nutshell, you yeah. know, at 23 years old, here you are and you're just trying to make a check, right? Like you're trying to just get your hands on some money and kind of get going. You know, what, what caught, what led up to that? Yeah. So, you know, first off, just not being happy. Um, you know, I got out of college, went to university of Arizona for four years, was partying my ass off, having the time of my life. Um, I got a corporate job selling payroll at ADP. And for me, like at first, that was kind of just like an excuse, like, oh, I get to make my own schedule. It's outside sales. This is going to be cool. And quickly, you know, I knew I was lying to myself. <laughs> Two months in, I'm like, this is fine. Right. Like, what am I doing? Um, so that's when I really started tapping into personal development. Like immediately, I, I started downloading podcasts, Gary Vee, Ed Milet, Grant Cardone, um, Tony Robbins, yeah. you know, anyone that could give me positivity in my life because there was none around me. Mm. I was with people that, you know, really had no ambition, um, were super content, mm. you know, getting that paycheck, going to the clubs on the yeah. weekend, hitting dinner, Ocean 42, all that. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Um, so for me, I was just like, this is not what I want. I want to do big things in life. And so quickly, you know, the personal development came up. I started getting into books, um, started surrounding myself with positivity, but the job and the income didn't change. Mm. I was still doing the same. I was driving to work every day, super pumped up, listening to these yep. podcasts, getting to my desk, depressed. Right. Like all energy sucked out of my body. I go home. I'm trying to, you know, somewhat like reach out to people or whatever, but I don't have any energy. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm done. You only have so much in your reserve. Yep. So then I knew that I had to quit. I had to, I had to make it online. I knew that the Instagram stuff worked. I started following people like you, Condi yep. back in the day, yep. anyone that was around Scottsdale that was doing <laughs> that I wanted to do, I followed. Yeah. And you know, your network becomes your net worth. Mm -hmm. So I started reaching out to these people. Um, I believe I reached out to Condi yep. first and I said, dude, I see you guys live like right next to me. This is my story. This is where I'm at. I'm at a job I hate. I'm ready to take action. He's like, come here. Yeah. So I came here and, uh, you know, I, I immediately just went all in. I actually took out a loan to pay for uh, celebrity yep. growth. Yep. And he blew my account up to like 30,000 followers. And then I also invested uh, with someone I'm not going to yeah. mention a name. I don't think you hang out with him anymore. But no. uh, I invested into a passive income investment, mm -hmm. which ended up being a scam. Right. So immediately, you know, I saw a little taste of what it was like to be an entrepreneur around mm -hmm. Scottsdale and stuff. And, you know, I invested and I was just stripped away of everything. Mm. So now I have a brand, you yeah. know, I got 30, 
30,000 followers, but I have nothing to show for it and I have no income. Right. So now I'm like, okay, I'm not going to end here. I'm going to at least work with these guys and try to do something to make money. And mm-hmm. you guys gave me the opportunity to, you know, do engagement and growth with Instagram accounts. And that was all I needed. I yeah. had, you know, some kind of vehicle to prove to myself that, you know, if I'm already doing sales at a corporate job, I can freaking, right. why can I not do this on my own with these people yeah. that are going to pay me more than I'll make in a month in my mm-hmm. job? So the first week, I don't know if you remember, but as you were saying, yep. when Condi gave me that check, I made two grand in yeah. seven days. Right. So I was still working at my job yep. during that. Um, so then right after that, I quit. Uh, me and Paulie Long, this kid, uh, you know him, yeah. of course, um, you know, great friend of mine. Um, we both went in together and just said, dude, we're going to make it online. Mm-hmm. And we had no idea of what was going to come out of it. I didn't know that I would be getting into credit. I didn't know any of that stuff. But what happened was one of the biggest negatives in my life, getting scammed on that investment mm-hmm. and having myself default on that loan mm. made me look at credit in the face like, holy <laughs> shit, like, how can I fix yeah. this? So I started looking at credit repair, learning about the, uh, you know, the disputes, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And I was like, I can remove this yep. collection. I got the collection removed. Now I'm like, well, other people need this too. Right. And that's when Credit Cloud started. So you know, I started shifting away from you know, being a commissioned affiliate. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was like, you know what? If I can sell for these guys and make a decent amount of money, imagine how much I can make if I just With start the- my own online business. Right. So Credit Class was born actually in that coffee shop. I was just at yep. Schmooze. 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 Yeah. Great coffee. Phenomenal coffee shop. I had two shops. sips. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. threw it out because yeah, I, I was know, cracked right. out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, dude, I, I created Credit Class. I yep. sat down for three hours. And um, in November of 2019, I launched it on Black Friday Mm -hmm. and I made six grand in a day. Wow. I had, uh, what was it, 26 people sign up at $250. And I just sat there, dude, on my couch. I'll never forget the feeling. And I was like, this is it. Yeah. I, fa- I found it. I found what people yep. need. People want to travel, live a dope lifestyle, use other people's money to do it, yep. and learn how to invest with credit at zero percent. Right. So that's when I started just going all in. I started reinvesting the money I was making into travel for mm-hmm. marketing to get more clients. Um, I partnered with an affiliate credit repair company because I didn't want to do the work. Yep. So I yep. learned how to outsource. So you know, I would send to them. I would make a decent commission on that, and then I opened up credit class. I started going from two hundred fifty dollars to five hundred dollars yep. to a thousand for wow. membership and quickly that blew up to over 350 people in like a year. Wow. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. It's a crazy story when you really think about it. And it, and it really goes to show how quickly, you know, I mean, look, you know, it's a, it, it's a different timeline for everybody, right? And everybody's exactly. on their kind of own trajectory, like you mentioned. And, you know, things happen for particular reasons. So in, in your case, you know, it's, it's very inspiring to hear. And for people listening and watching that you went from, you know, having this uh, negative thing happen to you, right? This kind of thing where there was, there was a, a promise of, of apparently a service that wasn't delivered, right? Yep. And then, but you took that and instead of being a victim, right, you said, wait a minute, how can I look at this differently and make something of it? And very shortly thereafter, now you're succeeding and, you know, as a result of the very thing that would have set most people back and put them on the that's it. Right? Dude, that's it with, with everything in life. Which I is mean, beautiful, man. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, you got to look at every single negative and find a way to turn it into a mm-hmm. positive because everything in life is happening for you, yep. not to you. Mm. And once you realize that and you realize that you can change your perspective and figure out why this happened. Yeah. Why do you need, what lesson do you need to learn out of mm. this? And how can you impact others with this lesson? Yeah, it's phenomenal, man. I mean, I think if, if people could like literally go back and rewatch that right there, you know, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so more people can hear that right there. But it, it's the absolute truth, you know, and I wish that more people would understand how simple success really is, right? Because it, it isn't complicated. People overcomplicate the heck out of it. So much, and they spend a decade trying to figure out the magic form formula when you that basically in a nutshell is the magic formula right 100%. so i love that man and then so here you are and now you're you're quickly scaling what was like your biggest hurdle at that time so you went from you know you made your two grand right you quit your job you're kind of doing some of the um the, the ig growth right at the time that was really big i think it's still pretty big right now but it's it's evolved now everyone right? does it everybody kind of does saturated. it i get 100 dms a day from people all over the freaking universe exactly. you know um, but at the time when we were doing that, you know, there wasn't a lot of people doing it. And we had a specific service we did. that was very unique. We did. Yeah, yeah. A couple of them really yep. at the time. And obviously none of them lasted very long, which we didn't think they would, no. you know, it was just like, Hey, let's hit it and, and quit it basically. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's what it was, you know, but it, there, it was beneficial to people at that time. Right. 100%. So when you're transitioning now, you, you quit your job, you made, you know, uh, a decent amount of money in that period of time. 
and then now you started to transition, as you said, right into the credit repair. You got your first hundred people. Um, you know, you made your six grand in a day or what have you. Yeah. What were some of the challenges associated with scaling that? You know what I yep. mean? Like, because I think a lot of people watching and listening, like, sounds great in theory. Like, good for you. You figured yep. it out, right? But how do how does one do that? And what are the challenges associated with that? Yeah, man. It this is a part that everyone like everyone can get to that day where they make the six mm -hmm. grand. But it's how do you keep making the six grand and go way further to six figures, seven figures, eight figures. Mm. That's the hardest part because you know, you, you do it and you're thinking so much in the short term, like, yes, I made the yeah. six grand. Let's go celebrate. Uh, I'll figure it out tomorrow. This is, you know, it's a once in a time thing. Like, mm -hmm. no, like this is something that you're going to constantly build on top of, create systems, automate, mm -hmm. invest in, you know, building your course out content. So quickly, like I just started investing right away. Mm -hmm. I already was learning so much from, like I said, the past eight months I was doing personal development. Mm -hmm. I read, uh, you know, rich dad, poor mm -hmm. dad. I I'm just learning how rich people do it. And it's not by saving money. Right. So I, you know, was quickly, first off, I had to get out of debt. I had to get off zero first. So you were actually in debt negative. at that time. Oh my okay. God. 50 grand. So 50 in grand debt. in debt. Okay. So for those of you listening, you're in debt. A lot of people are in debt, right? They're watching this right now. Like it is 1000% possible to get out of that. Yes. Okay. And, it, and it literally feels like you're never yeah. going to, right? I know mm -hmm. I had that weight on my shoulder and what you need to do. I think the most important thing to get out of debt is to not look at the debt. Don't think, mm. a, think don't think about mm. the debt. Don't think about lack, think about abundance and think yep. about income. Just yep. make income. Dude, Grant Cardone talks about that. Yeah. You know, a lot. He's like, man, like, I think there's a lot of people that talk. I think Bob Proctor talks about it. I mean, what you focus on, you attract more of, right? Exactly. So people think they're focused on their debt in a bad or in a good way. Yep. Like, oh, I'm gonna pay off my debt, I'm gonna pay off my debt. But they're constantly thinking about the debt. Exactly. So they're attracting more debt. And they're like, what's happening, right? I'm thinking about it. It, from a standpoint of like, I want to, I want to, you know, get rid of it. But it's like, no, you're thinking about it. Exactly. You got to think about income, yep. production, right? That's Abundance it. and the debt will take care of itself. Dude, the, the biggest way to get out of debt is just taking action mm. and non-action is what everyone do that. You, you look at your debt, you look at the payment date, you try to penny yeah. punch and, you know, set aside some money to pay. No, no. Just stop looking at yeah. it and just work your freaking ass off. Mm -hmm. Have the money come in, stack your pile, then pay it off. Wow. Once you have enough. Incredible. And so that's what I did. Like I, I really just started saving. I was late on payments. Mm -hmm. I didn't care. Yep. I was just like, I'm going to stack, stack, stack. And once you see that stack mm -hmm. rise and you can keep adding to it, you don't feel that lack anymore. Yeah. You don't, you feel abundant and mm -hmm. then you pay it off. And once you get off negative and mm -hmm. you just get to yep. zero that feeling that comes off your shoulders that you know that weightlessness and and you really truly feel like you're limitless mm -hmm. now now you can go so like yeah. once i got rid of that i mean that's when i started i mean in the bathroom yeah. i was telling you yeah so bitcoin started coming up so basically i one of the challenges with scaling too, back to your question yeah. is, um, you know, I start making money. I get off uh, zero. You know, I have some money in my bank account. Um, Credit class now has a hundred people, but okay. it's on an Instagram page. I'm with Paulie who, you know, I, I feel like at the time we weren't, we weren't um, integrating well. Mm -hmm. We weren't scaling together. He had a little business. I had a business, but I needed to go all in. So one thing you need to do is you need to jump in the fear. Mm. I knew at that point when I was living in Bali with him, the only way I could grow is if I left him. Got it. I needed to go on my own journey, my own path, find different partners, scale my business, market. He wanted to stay in Bali. And I was like, bro, I'm sorry. I got, I'm going to go do my thing. And that alone is so hard. There's a lot of times where you got to look at your challenges in the face and you never want to do it. Yeah. And you keep pushing it yeah. and put And the more you push it, the harder it's going to get. Mm -hmm. So you got to rip the bandaid off and just go for it. So I went for it. Um, you know, that's when I started traveling alone. I started, you know, really meditating, being on my own. I was in the UK. I went to Dubai. I went skydiving, like just doing shit I always yeah. dreamed of just kind of bucket list stuff. And I was getting in this rhythm of just, you know, traveling to wherever I want travel hacking. Yeah. You know, I knew all the hacks, staying in hotels for free, um, and, and really just going on my own journey. And quickly, you know, the, the marketing started helping grow, uh, my clientele. And then I invested back. I finally had, you know, maybe 10 yeah. K threw it into course production and ads. Mm. So I made a brand new platform. I got it on a website instead of an Instagram yeah. page. So now I had it on click funnels. I had a course platform. So now people quickly were like, Oh dude, this is so much better. More marketing, mm -hmm. more sales, yep. more cash. Sure. 
So now I realize that, okay, every little, you know, every couple months I need to take this cash pile I have and put it back into the business, mm -hmm. whether that be marketing, traveling more, that's still for me, that was it. Every time I traveled, I made more money yep. because my business was around travel. Right. So don't invest in things that like, if your business isn't around travel and it's mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, helping dentists scale ads, don't be blowing right. your money on yeah. travel. But for me that worked. So, you know, I did that and then quickly I was just in a groove, you know, making money all the time and I had the cash pile again yep. and I was investing but I'm like, I still have cash. What do I do with right. this? So then I started to dabble in investment and yep. this is how you get rich. Yep. Right now my net worth is multi, I'm a multimillionaire. Yeah. And to say that is just ridiculous. It's mind blowing. It, 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 forever, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That, that feeling never goes away. It, it yeah. really doesn't. Yeah. So like to get from, okay, I got 10 grand in my mm -hmm. bank account and a small business that I just started to a multimillionaire yeah. with two seven figure businesses now, in order to get there, you have to invest. Mm -hmm. So investing for me, I found the best asset class that we have of all humankind. We've never had an asymmetric bet like Bitcoin. And the reason why is because look around you at what we know. What do we know right now? We know that the government and the yep. Fed is printing unlimited money and you can divide your bank account by infinity. Yep. That's how you find the total money supply. You divide what you have by what the total supply is. We don't know the total yep. supply. So I knew that all the dollars I was keeping in my bank account were being devalued every single day. Mm -hmm. So I said, what is actually a scarce asset? Well, there's gold, but that hasn't gone up in 10 years. Um, there's the S&P 500, which is heavily manipulated yep. by money printing as well. Everything's kind of just pumped up. Yep. So I found Bitcoin and it's 21 million. Right. And that's it. That's, that's it. all there will ever be. Yep. So it's a better version of gold. It's online. You can take it across borders wherever you want. You just need a 24 yep. seed phrase in your head and you're good to go. You could take $10 million to China mm -hmm. on a plane and no one knows. Right. So for me, that that something just sparked in me and I was like, this is how I'm gonna become very, very rich. Yep. So I found out about that perfect timing because if I didn't quit my job and do what I did at that time, when COVID hit, I would have been working at a corporate job, I would have been screwed. Right. I had my personal brand, I had a little bit of money, I had momentum and I had a business and I was traveling the world when COVID hit. Yep. So I was in the perfect spot to take action and capitalize on what would be the biggest liquidity crisis mm. the world has ever seen. So wow. Bitcoin dropped, the stocks dropped, everything went to like 5K. Bitcoin went to 4K. Literally, I yeah. bought five Bitcoin at 5K yep. a pop. So I had now five Bitcoin. But like you said, yep. you know, you don't know really what the hell this asset class yep. does. You get a little scared on the yeah. volatility. So I sold like a month later at like 6K. Yep. Made a couple grand. I made, you know, five, six grand, whatever. Then I started really researching and I was like, okay, this is, this isn't going away. Maybe I should keep this and yep. not, not sell in the short term. Cause like we were talking about earlier, everything yep. beautiful happens in the long term. Mm -hmm. You got to stay low time preference and keep an outlook on the long term. So that's when I was like, dude, like this is what I'm going to commit to. And instead of buying the Lambos, instead of buying mm -hmm. the watches, instead of doing all the shit that I see every single person around me doing, yep. that's cool. That's fine. I'm going to have watches. I'm going to have cars. I love that stuff. Yep. But right now, if I have this opportunity in front of me, I need to take advantage mm -hmm. of it. And I had a gut feeling, and that's what I had when I quit my job too, the same exact one. Yep. So I said, from this day on, I'm gonna put every single dollar I make into Bitcoin. That's amazing. After I invest my business. Yeah. And I've done that still today. I bought $35,000 yep. worth of Bitcoin. Last night I bought 15,000. I mean, I'm buying full Bitcoins weekly, every yep. day. Like, that's incredible. So, you know, just from sticking to the plan, um, and watching, you know, that parabolic growth of, you know, the slight edge. If, if you keep compounding and doing the right things over yep. time, you're going to watch your life go like this 100%. or it's going to go like this. Success is exponential, habits. right? Exactly. It's the compound effect. They say it's the eight, eighth wonder of the world, right? Depending on how you look at exactly. it. Exactly. So you, you mix know? those success habits with the most successful yeah. asset on earth and you're going to have a insane It's almost life. a guaranteed um, scenario, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's I crazy. So, so is your current investment strategy then, to be clear, because I, I would love to understand more, and I know yep. everybody watching and listening would. So, you know, your, your, your cash flowing, um, you know, things are your companies, right? You Correct. have these two multiple seven figure companies now. You're constantly reinvesting a portion of your income back into the infrastructure, systems and processes of those to keep those continuously pumping out cash, right? A hundred percent. You right. need to do that. A hundred percent. And I agree with you a yeah. thousand percent it's yep. what i do 
And then you're taking the cash flow that those companies are spitting off, right? A certain percentage, I'd imagine, of that cash flow. And you know, you have it, you divvy it up, I'd imagine, right? You know, for people watching and listening, you've got some that goes into a, a rainy day. I'm gonna keep it in US dollars. Sure, it's gonna get devalued, but I need a little bit of US dollars of on course. hand. Some of it goes back into the business, some of it goes to travel, whatever. And then you've got this portion that, that gets invested into the cryptocurrency, right? Exactly. Is your strategy in the cryptocurrency more of a hodl long term? And I think I already know the answer. Or have you ever dabbled in like, do you ever day trade a certain portfolio or anything like that and, and kind of dabble in that? I mean, because like for me, and I talk to people about it all the time, right? Where, and I've gotten into, um, you know, heated discussions with people um, about like, hey, just buy and hold, buy and hold, buy and hold, right? And people are like, oh, and then when it goes down, everybody panic sells, right? And that's a big thing right now. Everybody's like diamond hands, you know? Yep. Um, and which is, which is cool. You know, my thought process has always been, listen, if milk goes on sale at the grocery store, I don't sell all my milk. I buy more, exactly. right? I stock up, right? Exactly. So that's always been my outlook on yep. it, you know, but people, people, you know, it's a very controversial subject, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's as a, re as a result of people our age, just they, they can't afford to hodl or what it is. But when I see it dip, dude, same as you this morning, I'm just buying more. Exactly. Do you ever day trade though? Or do you ever dabble in these other methodologies, I guess you could say, of yeah. investing? No, Okay. I, I don't have time and there is no time. Even if I wanted to, time's running out with Bitcoin. This is not something we can just be like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, yep. I'll do it next year, I'll learn about, it. no. Like yep. Bitcoin doesn't wait for anyone. So mm. for me, knowing what it's gonna do and knowing how doomed our world is mm. right now with the current yeah. economic outlook, Dude, it's an asymmetric bet. There's no other thing I'd rather put my money into right now than Bitcoin. Yep. If I buy a watch or I buy something stupid, even when I just bought my Range Rover, like I needed a car, yep. but buying that made me depressed. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, this <laughs> needs to be going in Bitcoin. Yeah. What the am I doing? So like, I just have a very all in uh, approach to it. You know, I'm 110% of my net worth in Bitcoin. I Love borrowed it. against my Bitcoin on BlockFi, took out a $260,000 loan and bought more Bitcoin yeah. before the bull run. And it's worked Love out it. great. Yeah. But if you know how to time, you know, I don't, I don't recommend day trading if you don't mm -hmm. know what you're doing. At least yeah. take a course if you're gonna try and be comfortable losing all of your money. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I don't wanna risk that. I have two, like you said, cash flowing businesses that already work. I'm gonna invest my time and knowledge back into those yeah. to grow them more to increase the cash flow and i'm gonna keep sticking with this yeah. asset that has quintupled my net worth 100 so you know for me that's my plan next 10 mm -hmm. years that's exactly what i'm gonna do i think by 2031 mm -hmm. bitcoin will be the next global reserve currency i believe it yeah yeah because i mean so gold is what a 10 billion dollar market cap right now give or take 10 I mean, trillion oh 10 sorry yeah, yeah 10 trillion dollar market cap and bitcoin's at about a one it's like well now the day, yeah the it was day. at 900 billion it, at one point what did it what, what was its peak it was like 1.3 trillion Okay, I got it. At its peak at so, it was, so at its peak, it was, I mean, rough numbers, like 13 to 15% of the total gold, um, exactly. you know, so, so, you know, which is pretty impressive considering it's only 2021. It's only been around for 12 years. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. know, so by 2025 or 2030, I mean, we're talking, you know, like you said, I mean, it's just going to be outrageous. You want to talk prices? Yeah. I, I'd love to know what All is right. it, What is your thought? Like where, where is it headed? You know? Yeah. So Bitcoin always does a 10 X from okay. where it was or more for the peak. Yep. So, you know, you look at 2013 when it hit a thousand dollars. Then we look at 2017, the yep. next bull run. 16 we, grand or 20 grand. We hit 20 grand, okay. but you know, around 10 K is what we leveled out around, yep. you know, throughout the, the bear after the bear market. Then now we go to hundred K mm. then we go to a million. Got it. Then we go to 10 million. It's never failed yet. Yep. If you look at the data, if you look at the on-chain analytics, if you look at everything, I mean, if plan B stock to flow model is yeah. correct, which it has been so far, we're going to be at a million dollar Bitcoin in 2024. Wow. So all these people selling yep. and getting in for a couple months, selling at 60 K yep. thinking they made a ton of money. Sure. You might've made a hundred grand or a million dollars, yep. But dude, do you understand? Like yeah. you can make a hundred million dollars yep. on Bitcoin. And we don't even know in dollar terms what it's gonna be because what's happening is the dollar is collapsing into Bitcoin. Mm. So people are doing a speculative attack on the dollar. They're borrowing money for cheap or 0% for 30 years, like mm -hmm. Michael Saylor. Yep. You know, he's got a couple billion dollar business. You know the leverage you get with that? Right. You're, you're borrowing a billion dollars yep. at 0% for 30 years. Mm. And what do you do with it? You put it right in the yep. asset class that's going to eat the dollar. Right. So now I'm like looking at Michael Saylor and all these other companies, he's sharing his game plan on how to literally take down the American dollar wow. to the world. 
And I'm like, okay, well, I can do this yep. too. I got 0% money. 100%. I have loans that I can take out against my Bitcoin. So that's exactly what I did. Yep. I'm joining the speculative attack on the US dollar. And sorry, YouTube, maybe <laughs> you have to blur this out. <laughs> right. um, and, and that's what I did. Yeah. I'm borrowing money cheap and mm -hmm. I'm putting it into, into an asset that exponentially grows right. as the dollar gets cheaper. Yep. So look at everything around you. This water yep. costs maybe a dollar. Yeah. In Bitcoin, the water gets cheaper mm. every single day. Mm. And in dollars, the water gets more expensive. Right, right. Everything around us is going up in price in dollars yeah. and down in price in Bitcoin. Insane. Yeah, insane when you think about it. And so you talk a lot about Bitcoin, and now I'm curious, you know, what what other coins, you know, I was on the on the uh, stair stepper this morning, I bought some Ethereum, I bought yep. some Bitcoin. I was telling you before the podcast, you know, I own personally, just some random stuff, right? For sure. I, I believe, and I don't know nearly as much as you do, my primary thing is real estate, but yeah, yeah. but I love crypto and I love Bitcoin, right? I always have, you know, yeah. and, um, and, and I need to buy more. Like after this podcast, I'm gonna buy more. Good. What other alt, like is there anything else that people should be looking at right now? Or is Bitcoin really like the end all be y'all you so, know so look i mean altcoins maybe they work maybe they yep. don't um there's a lot of question marks right mm -hmm. now with you know are they securities are they not they're, are they're un very unregulated mm. uh, whereas bitcoin you know there's nothing they could really do because it's decentralized mm. altcoins are centralized they, are, they yeah. have an owner they have an office they have a team they have investors mm. um you know it's it's like a startup yep. whereas bitcoin satoshi nakamoto was gone Right. He's not there. It's decentralized. It's peer to peer and it's proof of work. Mm. So proof of work is, you know, you don't, you don't trust, you verify. Mm -hmm. It's better than trusting. Yeah. You don't want to trust people. We trust in God. We trust yeah. on the U S dollar. What the hell does that even right. mean? We're right. just trusting the government and our dollars are whatever they say they're worth. Yeah. And once the trust runs out, the, the dollar doesn't matter. Every fiat currency in human history has collapsed. Mm. The U.S. dollar right now is going on 100 years. This is like the longest we've... So it's going to crumble yeah. eventually. So when it comes to altcoins, I just don't think I want to risk it with the time and my energy where I know Bitcoin can't be stopped. Yeah. Whereas Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin is the owner and they could shut it down. Yeah. Um, Bitcoin, you want to shut it down? Great. You have to turn off the global internet. Mm. You can't go to the office. You can't call up Satoshi yep. and be like, yo, yeah. we're, we're done. There's right. nothing they could do. So I like decentralized. I like, you know, proof of work, which is you're verifying, not trusting. Mm -hmm. Ethereum's moving to proof of stake, which mm. means the biggest stakeholders make the rules. Got it. So like people are saying, oh, it's ultrasound money. The VC firms and all the banks love it because they can control it. Sure. Of course. It makes all the sense I don't sense like in the control. World. Yeah, no. And that's what we've been doing for yep. our entire life. It's never worked. As a, as a human species, yeah. and it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. collapses. 100%. We need something that cannot be controlled. I agree. And that's what Bitcoin is. Right. Which is why the value of that in, in a decade from now will be what we're talking about, right? It's going to be wild. Again, you know, the, the scare. And, and, you know, I was doing, I was, I was talking to somebody the other day, and it was a totally different conversation, but I was like, you know, humans, and you know this, but humans, um, scarcity and humans go hand in hand, right? I mean, you walk into a bar, put 200 people in a bar. If there's one beer left, what's that beer worth? Oh, yeah. I'm going to, dude, I'm paying for that oh, beer, yeah. right? Like whatever it costs, Absolutely. like we're, we're buying it, right? Now, if they're, if the whole bar is clear full of alcohol and you got all the same people, you know, the beer's worth a lot less money. If they tell me it's $10 for beer, I'm going somewhere else. That's too yeah, expensive, right? 100%. I can get more. Exactly. So, you know, human beings value scarcity by default, right? Always we, we've have. always valued scarcity, yep. you know, with, with relationships, with everything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis is we're putting a value on scarcity. If I can't get this microphone and I want to do a podcast really bad, I'll do whatever it takes to get the microphone. Yep. I'll pay a thousand bucks for it. I'll, I'll rent it. I'll do whatever I got to do. Yeah. Right. So, um, but then again, if, if Amazon prime can get it to me in 24 hours, I'm going to see what one the best option is and I'm going to save 50 bucks. Exactly. Right. So I love it, man, because it's just everything you're saying. It's like it, even a guy like me that doesn't understand it at nearly the level you do, right? I can look at it and fully understand, hey, 21 million total circulation, completely decentralized, human beings value scarcity, and time is money. Yes. Right? I mean, I can literally just simplify it and say, okay, it makes all the sense in the world without yes. really knowing everything about everything, right? Yes. So I, I love it, man. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Now, again, this will probably be a stupid question, but I know, and because I don't know enough about it, but a lot of people put their Bitcoin into these different exchanges that pay interest. Mm -hmm. What is your thought? And I don't know much about any of For the sure. exchanges, um, not nearly at the level you do. What is your thought on a lot of those different platforms where you can, uh, and again, I don't know the, the term, even the correct terminology. Yeah, 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 I got it. it. Are they just borrowing? Essentially, they're just, I'd imagine it works just like anything else. Yeah, so it's yield. Okay. So basically, like, you know, if you lend a bank money or you lend your friend money, mm -hmm. you want money for that mm -hmm. money that you lend him. So they're going to 
to pay you a yield on it. Yeah. So you're basically putting, let's say you use BlockFi, for example, mm -hmm. which has horrible rates right now. It's okay. like 0.01% <laughs> on like more than 0.1 Bitcoin. Okay. It's brutal. Got it. But um, yeah, basically, you know, I put it in BlockFi and uh, they're going to take my Bitcoin. They're going to lend it out to Jerry. They're going to lend it out to Susie, okay. whatever. And they're going to pay me 0.1% for mm -hmm. my, for me lending it out. Sure. Now, this is not FDIC insured. Right. There's no insurance. If BlockFi goes down, it gets hacked. It's not your keys. It's not your coin. Mm -hmm. They're holding your Bitcoin yep. and it could be lost forever. That's the issue, I would imagine. That's the main scary. one, right? That's scary. Yeah. So for me, um, when I first started out, I, I actually made $22,000 just from yield on Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and they the, pay you in Bitcoin. The yields were higher that, at that oh point. Oh my God. Right? Yeah. I was getting paid 8.6%. Wow. Yeah. So like when I saw that, I was a no brainer. Yep. And you know, I only had a couple Bitcoin. I threw it in there. You get paid out monthly sure. and that compounds. They pay you out in Bitcoin. I made 22 grand. Yeah. And then I started realizing like, okay, I now have a good amount of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. If I lost this, I'd be devastated. You want to diversify at that I point, wanna, right? I want to get it out. Yeah. <laughs> I want to I want to keep it safe. Yeah. I want to hold it. Um, so what you do is if you want maximum security, there's two ways to go about it. You could self-custody mm -hmm. or you could do, you know, a custody with a company like Casa mm -hmm. uh, where they're going to do multi-signature. So you'll hold a portion of your mm -hmm. key. They hold a portion of your key. So they have to actually communicate with you and you have to, you know, in order to release your mm -hmm. coin or move it around, they have to verify everything and it's like a white glove service Got you know it. it's very exclusive um you pay like five thousand dollars a year and they do everything like perfect wow. and it's it's amazing so i'm thinking about doing that but then there's the other way where you could self-custody mm -hmm. so right now i have everything in a nano ledger x which yep. is basically like a hard drive yep. it's offline so it's cold storage it's not connected to the internet it. so it's not at risk of hackers at all so you put all your bitcoin in this cold storage you can put it in a safe and mm -hmm. as long as you have your 24 seed phrase written down that that's your Bitcoin. Got it. You need to know the seed phrase. So the seed phrase, instead of writing it on paper, paper, you could crumble it. You could fucking put it on yep. fire. It's, it's gone. Your password's yep. gone. Mm -hmm. If you lose the password, you lose your Bitcoin. Yep. So what you should do is you get a metal seed phrase uh, plate and you could stamp it like with a metal mm. gun. And now the metal's indestructible. It's fireproof. Yep. You know, you, you can't screw it up. So you put that somewhere in a safe or if you trust a bank, um, mm. you could put it in a safety deposit box. Sure. Now that's safe. So if your ledger, let's say, gets stolen or thrown in an ocean mm -hmm. and it's broken forever, you just buy another one online and put your seed phrase in and all your Bitcoins back. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that's so the I ledger. Did. Yeah. So that's really interesting. So then the ledger, it's, it is like a hard drive, but not really at the same time. Because like if I have a hard drive, like if we're filming this podcast and my hard drive goes kaput, it's I might not be able to get the footage back, right? Exactly. So it's not like that. It then. just holds your key, your, your seed phrase. So Understood. basically like when you type your seed phrase into it, mm -hmm. it'll unlock. But if you lose it and you have your seed phrase still, you could buy a new one, put it in, Got and it. then it just finds it on the blockchain. All you're buying, when you buy Bitcoin, you're just buying the spot on the blockchain mm. of, of the code. Interesting. That's it. Yeah, I love it, man. I it get, it get, I get hyped up when I talk about yeah. crypto. Dude. It's like, tokenized energy. Yeah. We're yeah. literally like we found a way to tokenize pure monetary energy. It's insane. And we used to store it, and we still do, in dollars yeah. that are backed by nothing that right. get devalued. Why are we putting in all this work and making all this money if we're just throwing it away? Sure. Why don't we put it in something that has 21 million hard supply and can't be devalued? Yeah, I love it, dude. Well, I, I absolutely love it. I know that I got a ton of value from that. I know everybody else did too. So what is your plan, you know, over the next, you know, two, three, four, five years, you know, are you, are you all in crypto? Does there come a day and a time where you buy real estate? Does there come a day and a time where you, you know, what, what is, what does your life look like in a couple of years? You've got these companies, you're yeah. doing well with them. Yeah. You're helping people with their, what's the other company, by the way? Uh, so I have leverage investments, okay. uh, which is e-commerce, automated e-commerce. Uh, and then I also have leverage lifestyle. Love it. So it's like, Credit class 2.0. Yeah. But instead of just focusing on credit, uh, we focus on personal branding, credit, travel, Bitcoin, and passive income. And then, so the, my, and, and while you're on that, and I don't mean to interrupt you, yeah. do you, do you do like the, the Walmart and the Amazon stuff at I all right now? I do just Walmart. Okay, just yep. Walmart. So I have a partner. Uh, we've been together since January 2020, mm -hmm. um, and we've been doing Walmart since then. Do you like that platform? Walmart? Yeah. yeah. I like it a lot better than Amazon. Okay. Um, you know, now that we've been almost two years in, we're starting to see kind of the same thing where they're suspending stores mm -hmm. or some terminations. But 
for the past two years, man, yeah. it's been just smooth Incredible. sailing. It's been great. Um, but luckily, you know, my partner Mike's been in e-commerce for four and a half years, yep. started in FBA, dropped out of college, started in a basement and has been working his way up. So like, you know, once you understand drop shipping yep. the model, you can then take it and duplicate it and put it on other platforms. Doesn't matter where, yeah. So yeah, so like, you know, problems obviously are gonna arise. It's a brand new exploding mm -hmm. industry. Everyone and their mom wants a Walmart sure. store. Walmart now knows that people are doing yep. automation. So yes, they're cracking down, but there's all Always ways to you know dispute um, you know the the termination the suspension um, and you know you just problem solve yeah. so you know that's kind of that's what where it is. we're at yeah. yeah we have a hundred clients right now okay amazing you know? yeah I have a Walmart store right now okay. too awesome. so I'll, I'll definitely have to talk to you more about it my store did just get suspended really yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. It, we just got hit the entire industry um, I'm in a group chat with a bunch yep. of other companies uh, there was like fifty thousand suspensions like, wow yeah platform wide and there's really no reason for it yeah so yeah. Walmart it's right before Q4. The okay. holidays, yeah, you know, craziness. You, I you, even heard, I, I, I even heard, and we'll see if we want to cut this out of the podcast later. But I even heard that at one point, like they were, they were just about to release earnings, mm -hmm. and because they're holding my payment right now, yep. and I, I heard they're holding a bunch of people's payments. Well, yep. if, theoretically, they were holding fifty thousand people's payments. They got more cash in the bank right before they're about to release their earnings report. I think that was last week. Wow. And so I heard some now stories. Now that you put it that way, I yeah. never thought of that. Yeah. So I, you know, and who knows, right? I mean, a big company like that, would they hold right. a bunch it's of payments? Scammy, you know, yeah. I don't know, you yeah. know, but, um, but hey, they're, they're trying to beat Amazon. Who somebody. knows, right? You never they want know. investor money. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and yeah. like you said, you know, there's always going to be issues and stuff. And of course, and I knew that going into it, you Yeah. Know? and I killed it like out of the gate. So uh -huh. I think that was part of the problem is my store scaled really, really fast. Yeah. And I, you know, they, they didn't like that, obviously. I can't imagine. For you sure. Know, so no. Yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. refunds yeah. and stuff. You yeah, know? absolutely. Cancellations. Yeah. yeah, I went from zero to doing like three or four grand a day, like every day consistently in a matter of like 30 days. Too fast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for us, like we try to get all of our clients two day shipping in 30 to 45 days, okay. which is pretty much when you're a verified seller, you're allowed to ship products in two days, yep. which is, which is awesome. Everyone wants their products yep. fast. So you're, you're, you know, once you get approved for that, your sales pretty much like triple. Yep. Um, and that takes some time. You know, we scale slow. We got to have the tracking mm -hmm. perfect. We can't have any, you know, we're a hundred percent tracking rating. Yeah. If you fall below that, that's when you can start getting suspended. So mm, interesting. Yeah, once you have cancellations, yeah. returns, that's when everything starts getting a little lower. You're at more of a risk. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll definitely have to talk more about that. And obviously sure. if anybody's interested, they can shoot you a DM or whatever, yeah, yeah. We'll plug your information later. So, so you're doing the, the, that kind of stuff, right? The, the Walmart kind of stuff, the passive income, and you've got the credit repair, Cryptocurrency, obviously. Yep. So back to the question, you know, three years, five years down the road. Yeah. What does it look like? More companies, more just scaling it Man, bigger? I'm, I really don't even think I'm a businessman. Yeah. Like, I think I'm more of a creator. Um, I love storytelling. Like mm. I, I still, I tell stories, you know, on, on Instagram every single day. Stories yep. is my favorite thing to do. Um, so I love creating content. YouTube, I know you're huge in yep. YouTube. Um, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy hard. Yep. Um, you just got to stay consistent. So for me, a dream world would look like me traveling around the world, speaking at events, inspiring mm -hmm. people, impacting people to achieve freedom financially, mentally, spiritually. Yeah. Um, you know, I did, I have a retreat company. We did a retreat. Um, I want to get into this burrito company that I love in uh, Tulum. It's called mm. Burrito Amor, and we're actually looking. Dude, for I've been there. Yeah, it's phenomenal. 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 So I'm, I'm working with the owners yep. to find a spot in Miami. Okay. So that's another investment, like kind of a passion project. Yeah, you know, have Burrito Amor in Miami. Oh, yeah. I think it would absolutely crush. Um, I'm huge into biohack and biohacking and fitness. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, man, I, I really just I take it day by day. Yeah. I don't I don't go six years out. But one thing I do now is Bitcoin. Yeah, like for sure. I really think that you know it's going to hit 10 million dollars yeah. by 2031 so if i can just keep doing what i'm doing finding amazing fun businesses mm -hmm. that i love that are making good money keep feeding those yep. beasts like you know leverage lifestyle uh my my walmart company mm -hmm. you know anything in e-commerce just keep that space going and just keep buying bitcoin yeah. constantly i mean you know 90 percent of my net worth is in bitcoin mm -hmm. um and it's it's not going to stop yeah. so i think by you know 2031 I mean, I could really do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Does that, does that, because I know people are wondering, does that scare you ever when, when, you, when you think 90% of your net worth is in, is in Bitcoin? Do you think there'll be a day where you'll have, you know, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more of your net worth in another industry entirely? Nah. No, no it's okay. the best asset yeah. in the world. Yeah, for me, it's nothing out returns besides investing in yourself. Got it. Um, so like, it, unless there's something that I'm super passionate mm -hmm. about, like an investment or a business, that I'm like... <laughs> 
I need like a million dollars to make this work, then I guess that would have to be something. Yeah, it has to be something that I'm so passionate about that's gonna be like a business investment. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting, yeah. yeah. Very, and I love the I love the outlook, like I love the mindset, you know, yeah. and I love like the confidence, like the sheer confidence, because I'm, I'm that way in real estate. I'm pretty open-minded to, to diversifying a little bit more into crypto, at least yep. that being like the one thing, For sure. especially Bitcoin. Um, you know, and, but mostly I'm like real estate. Right. And, and for very similar reasons, it's just, you know, you, you, you got hooked on the crypto. I got hooked on the real estate a long time ago. Exactly. Now the problem with real estate is it just takes a lot longer. Uh -huh. Um, but you know, it's tangible. It's, 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 it's similar to Bitcoin from the standpoint that it, it's actually very scarce. Yep. You know, you have developers can only develop so fast, you know, your population's growing quicker than, you know, the, the builders can keep up. Of course. There's only so much land yep. in, in the entire universe. That's right. True. So as time goes, along land by default has to become more valuable That's true. and then people have to have a place to live so there there can never that can never be replaced you can't sleep on the computer yep. it's just physically impossible That's right true. so um I, I from from that standpoint i fell in love with real estate but what's so interesting about that is when you look at real estate and bitcoin and probably somebody like grant cardone would argue this but yep. there's a lot of similarities so yeah, so I mean, for you, I think like once you have something you know works, mm -hmm. why try to reroute your whole life and figure out something that you don't understand? Yet? Right. You've put so much time and energy into real estate and real estate's been around for humanity. Yep. Everyone needs you know a place to sleep and a place to live, shelter. Mm -hmm. um, that's never running out. So for you, like, I would definitely start allocating more to Bitcoin, yep. uh, but figure out what portion of your net worth you want to throw in. But before you do that, start educating, mm. like start reading books, start getting on Twitter, get involved in the Bitcoin community. And once you start, you know, diving down that rabbit hole mm -hmm. and the deeper you go, the more of your net worth is going to go into Bitcoin. Right. Once your conviction grows, your amount allocated grows as yeah, well. Yeah, I believe it. it I believe it. Together. Yeah. No, and I couldn't agree more. And I think I think that um, yeah, like, and and I love what you said by the way too. I think it's very important for people, you know. And I've made this mistake, and you probably have too. Yeah. Where I've I've gotten shiny object syndrome, oh at, at, you know, during my life, yeah. and every time I've done that, it, it's always resulted in like it's always backfired, right? For Where sure. it's like because you know what the thing that I'm good at is is the money maker, right? Yep. So it's like make the money. That's the entire purpose of that, right? Just like. Your businesses create 100%. the cash flow take the cash flow invest exactly. right so all you know the one thing that i'll be focused on is just investing more yep. into bitcoin because i'm already investing we already yeah. have the companies that are spitting off the cash flow, exactly right so it's just hey instead of taking 90 percent of my money and do real estate let's take 30 or 40 more percent and, and start shoving that into Allocate. bitcoin right now right exactly 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 yeah. and really and simple and back to shiny object sy syndrome um i love that you brought that up because I think that sets back so many entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that are our age right now. Everyone wants to, you know, impress people they don't yeah. like. And that's yeah. what like it, it's so sad. <laughs> yeah. But what really makes you happy is when you have nothing tying you down. Mm -hmm. So the more shit you own, like this is true for anyone. The more homes you own, the more businesses you yeah. own, the more cars you own, the more stress you're going to have, mm -hmm. the more you're going to feel like you're obligated to be somewhere at some time and hiring some people to yeah. take care of like it's a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, getting rid of the baggage and having as little shit as possible yeah. to take care of at all times besides my online businesses, which you know, you can yeah. move wherever the hell you want. Yeah. So like, I think just for every, anyone watching this, like if you're trying to impress people that you don't even like, then you gotta, you gotta figure out, you know, why, like, why do you care? You know, right. like it, it doesn't matter. Just start focusing more on freedom. Mm -hmm. If you can have time freedom, location freedom and freedom to just do whatever you want, whenever you want with your family, your friends, um, whatever businesses you want, that's true happiness. Yeah, I believe. And I, and I couldn't agree more. I think that you're, you're dead on. And I'm glad we went back. We backtracked and talked a little bit more about that because Everybody our age, I mean, not everybody, but basically Most. everybody our age struggles with that. Yes. And, um, and it, it is sad, you know, because they're not, do, it almost becomes this idea where they're not, they're not really doing it because it's what they want to do anymore. They, mm -hmm. they, they say it is, and that's what they maybe convince themselves of, but yep. that's not the true reasoning behind it. You exactly. Know? It's like for me, you know, I'm, I'm as minimal as I can be, yep. but I'm also addicted to what I do and I genuinely love it, right? Like I don't care what people think at all, exactly. you know? Exactly. And, um, and I'm really, it's like probably my like my gift yeah you know people to the point where like people don't even waste their time and energy on me yeah because they know they won't You're get in your own they lane. won't get any reaction yeah, out of me like you yeah. know and um and it has happened so many times so 
I, I think that like get to that point, right? Like yep. where you genuinely don't care. Don't care. Cause that means you're really doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're living your life totally on your own mm -hmm. path. Like you have, you know, horse races, yep. they wear the blinders yep. like this so they can't see the other horses. That's you. Yeah. You're just looking straight and it's you against you it is. and that's it. So like, for you and me, we're both focused on YouTube. Mm -hmm. How much content can I put out? How can I get to this amount yeah. of followers? So like you put the carrot in front of your face and you fucking just go yeah. ham. And that's that's honestly when I'm the happiest, when I'm being productive yeah. and I'm adding value to other people's lives and I'm improving upon my business. This is my favorite thing right here in the entire world. Yep. You know what I mean? I, I took like four or five months off of social media because we were changing a lot of the infrastructure in my companies and I just didn't have the time. I, and I was it literally those four or five months, like every single day I was like, man, like I got to get back on, I got to go. And it wasn't because like I felt this like need to be back in front of people. It was the polar opposite, right? It's because I genuinely love this right here. It's something I love about just sitting in this room right now. I don't, I don't know how to explain yeah. it, right? Same. And it's either like if people are watching it, it you either have that or you don't. Mm -hmm. You can't force it. I mean, it's just like you have it or you don't, right? Exactly. And so, dude, I love it. And I'm excited for you to blow up on YouTube too. Dude. I'm I'm not I'm nowhere like where where we need to go. But if you smash the like button right now for the YouTube smash algorithm, smash that okay, like button. Smash it just hit like punch it right in the face okay Come we'll on, show guys. you like uh, a, a screenshot of somebody just punching a like button okay um and <laughs> drop a comment down below but i love it man so you're, you're working on the youtube deal yep. you're obviously big on instagram tiktok too. uh tiktok okay TikTok. i don't follow you on tiktok you want to talk tiktok yeah let's talk about Dude, it for a minute so tiktok was one of those things that like i just hated so much okay. because i couldn't figure it out mm. so one of those things where <laughs> i was just like dude it's so gay F TikTok, I hate it. Yeah. And it was just me, you know, being pissed off deep yeah. down and taking my anger out on it. So I just ignored it and stuck to Instagram. Mm -hmm. What happened was I realized how fast you could blow up on this platform. Mm. Um, I saw my friend Pauly. Pauly yeah. blew up. He got like one video that hit a million. I was like, dude, no way. Like that's all it took. Yeah. So I made, you know, the, the same thing I did with all my businesses, with any goal I make, I go, I'm not stopping until mm -hmm. it happens. Yeah. And that's anything in life. If you want it, you can have it done. You just have to work your freaking ass off. You can't quit until it's actually manifested. Yep. So I was like, I'm going to go ham. I'm going to post three videos a day on Bitcoin because I'm already looking at charts all day. I'm reading Twitter. Why don't I just talk about my favorite tweets and charts yep. to TikTok? It's so easy. So literally within like three videos, I had one hit like 10K. I'm like, okay, this wow. is great. And you just need the vehicle on TikTok to talk about. And you need to stick to like one thing. Mm. So for you, it's like real estate. Yep. Constant value every single day on real estate. Maybe your podcast, chop up yeah. clips, throw it on every single day on TikTok. And these videos over time, what TikTok will do is it's going to put every single one of your videos on for you. Mm -hmm. For you calculates by how many, how much watch time you have. Yep. So if you put a 15 second video on there, you need all 15 mm -hmm. seconds watched because it's so short. Yep. 30 seconds, I think you need, I don't know, maybe like 25 seconds Got watch. It. One minute, you need a lot too. The easiest is obviously all 15 seconds. Yep. So do 15 seconds. Find your favorite clip, uh, you know, if you're doing yeah, yeah. this, you chop it up, you throw it up. And if TikTok realizes that you're posting podcasts every single day, they now know to put it out to podcast people. Yep. So the for you page is going to get filled with your video. If it hits, they're going to share it to 10 yep. more people, a thousand people, a million people. And then that's how it works. Right. So like everyone gets a fair chance on TikTok, but the way to make sure that your chance is seen, you have to simplify it into one yeah. subject. Yeah. So when I found the Bitcoin videos mm -hmm. and that's what I freaking love every day, I talk yep. about it nonstop. I was like, dude, all I got to do is do two to three videos every single day. It takes 15 yep. seconds, 20 minutes of my day to, to grow. And what I have now is like 58,000 followers yeah. in like 10 months of organic. And like I had one video hit 4.6 million wow. of me flying to Dubai on like a first class thing. Um, and business blurb on Instagram. I don't know if they're run by Bloomberg or something, uh -huh. but it's like a big page. They have a couple million followers. Um, they reposted it and now I'm getting leads to Instagram and YouTube wow. from this one video that blew up. Sure. So all you need is one. Of course. And then once you hit it, you yep. know the feeling you I hit do. that one on YouTube. Then it's addictive. It, it's running dude. Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. just, and there's no time to celebrate. No. You cannot mm -mm. stop with content. No. Content's every single day. The numbers are there, obviously to motivate you. Sometimes it could suck if yep. you're not hitting your numbers that you want. But once you hit it, you're it's going game to over, the moon. Man. Yeah. You're going and to and the moon. honestly, what's so interesting, and, and I, I bet you some people find this interesting, so we'll just keep it going for a second, but YouTube's very similar, Yeah. right? So YouTube, you I know, need help with YouTube. Yeah, man. YouTube, bro, it's literally all, all YouTube cares. So like once upon a time, they cared about, so like back when you look at like, um, like Logan Paul back in the day and like Casey Neistat and like David Dub, like a lot of these like OG, like Casey Neistat is a good example, right? Yep. Back then the YouTube algorithm was just 
click-through rate. So they cared about click-through rate, right? Okay. Meaning your, your title and thumbnail. Yep. Out, of, out of every 100 people that saw your title and thumbnail, whether that was on suggested, homepage, or their watch page, right? Because there's yeah. like three different places people can see a title and thumbnail on YouTube. For sure. And so like if I go onto my YouTube and my homepage is full of videos, I just gave everybody an impression, right? Oh. So out of every 100 impressions that I have, how many clicks do I get, right? So at, once upon a time, the algorithm was just based on that. Which is why every but which is where clickbait became a, a concept. The thumbnail things. The the, the idea of clickbait okay, in general, got right? It. Because people would com, people would basically make thumbnails that had nothing to do with the video mm -hmm. to get people to click, yep. and they would go viral. Then YouTube obviously realized that that wasn't working because then people would just immediately click right back out of the video and keep mm -hmm. doing their thing, right? Yep. So the and again, what is every platform's goal to keep people on the platform, Correct. right? So then YouTube said, okay, we care about click-through rate, but then we care about view duration, right? So very similar to TikTok. So yeah. first and foremost, how many people click on it out of every hundred impressions, right? You know, you want to be somewhere between like five and 10%, right? So you'll, if you look at your analytics on YouTube yeah. in the first like three hours, I think it'll start to tell you like what your click-through rate is. Okay. If you're at like one or 2%, it's too low, yep. right? It, that video is never going to go viral. You need to change your thumbnail and change your title, make it more appealing, right? For sure. Um, and then they care about how many people, uh, the percentage of video watched, right? It's not as much about overall view duration as it is percent video watch. Okay. So if you have a 12 or 15 minute video, they want to see like 30 to 40% at a minimum uh, watch time. Okay. So they want to see if, if you, dude, if you can nail a five to 10% click through rate with a uh, 30 to 40% uh, minimum watch time, yep. that's a viral uh, video right there. Got it. Yeah. And, and does time matter? Cause like I always try to make it over 10 minutes. It does because again, you know, are you monetizing YouTube I, right now? I am, but I can't get my AdSense account approved really? for some reason. Yeah, okay. I, I have everything checked out. You know, I got, got 4,000 watch hours. I have over a thousand subs. Yeah. But, so uh, as soon as you get the AdSense account approved, yeah. um, then, you know, yeah, because remember, so like, and YouTube has never publicly admitted this but they they're gonna push monetized channels more than they are unmonetized channels right for sure well they changed the the algorithm so it went from 10 minutes to being able to do mid-roll ads to eight minutes now minimum right okay so anything above an eight minute video you can place mid-roll ads and remember the more ads than a video i mean you don't want to overdo it either right so there's like you can a, a bit of a balance how many ads you want anything over eight minutes okay, okay so anything over eight minutes you choose the placement of your ads too Yep. So you literally go in there and you can manually place your ads like wherever you want, wow. right? Yeah. So I would say no matter what, like don't ever like do shorter than eight minute videos. Uh -huh. um, I think anybody that's doing shorter than that, like I see some people that are doing like the, what are they, the, the YouTube shorts or whatever. Yep. I Dude, mean, that actually worked for me yeah. very well. And they do work right now. I think long term YouTube's not like, I think YouTube, and this is just my opinion, yeah. people are going to disagree with this. YouTube owns the horizontal video space, yep. right? Stick with that. Yes. Because nobody can ever compete with that, yeah. right? YouTube tried to compete with, with shorts, with Instagram and, and TikTok, when they don't need to compete with anybody because it's Google For sure. at the end of the day. We're talking sure. like, uh, you're never going to be able to beat them when it comes to horizontal video. What other platform can I literally go on my phone, yeah. YouTube Premium, and airplay it to my 80-inch flat screen TV in 4K? Yeah, it's right? Crazy. Like, you can't do that on any platform. For sure. So I think they should focus on just dominating that space. Can I say something about Go ahead. it though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like I'm already doing TikToks nonstop two yep. or three a day. So I put my assistant puts them on Instagram Reels. Yep. Is that what it's called? Instagram Reels, Reels yep. yep. Uh, so he does is a that. hot, a hot algorithm right now. Blows yep. up just as much as yep. TikTok, which is also flooding me with organic on Instagram, yep. which is almost impossible as you know. It is, yep. So then I'm like, dude, why the hell are we not putting on YouTube Shorts? Right. I'm making two to three videos a day. Here yep. you go, put it on there. Boom, 60 yep. followers in a day. Wow. The first day we do it, yeah. had one video go up to 10,000 views. Wow. And my followers are just blowing up just through shorts. That's incredible. So for me, I think what you're saying is correct. If you're just doing content that yep. has nothing to do on any other platform with the short yeah. short form, then just stick to horizontal. A but if you're percent. already creating for TikTok and Reels, then just put it on yeah, shorts. I agree. Why not? Yeah, you know? I agree. And I think yeah. like anything also to get subscribers on YouTube pretty much like uh, uh, genuinely and authentically in, in you know, is 100% worth it. So if you've got to do like trending videos, trending topics, whatever, because once you have the subscribers, it, you build the domino effect, the momentum effect, right? Yeah. The, the snowball effect. And, it, and you know, YouTube is very similar where it is a pain in the butt to get going, but once you're going, it, you're going, right? You're exactly. moving. Exactly. So if YouTube Shorts is it, if freaking making stimulus videos when, when that, you know what that I mean? That was it. Like, right? that was me, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, whatever so that can is. Can I ask you know? a question about yeah, that? Yeah, go ahead. How yeah. much money in ads did you make on that? Well, I only, I only got, I got like a, 
a few million views, I think, doing yeah. stimulus videos. Yeah. So I probably made like 10 grand in ad revenue. Really? Yeah. But okay. the, the ad rates were way lower with stimulus because the audience what, didn't have any money, right? I, I mean, I, I probably, I probably, you know, like I shouldn't say it maybe that bluntly. Like the audience was, because every audience on, on YouTube is different, right? So like David Dobrik's CPM is significantly lower than Graham Stephan, right? Like Graham Stephan has one of the highest CPMs in the YouTube like because world. Because it's all business related? It's all business. And all the ads are business related. Uh -huh. all, all the money, all the people that have all the money to spend on ads are in that niche. So let me ask you a question. Do you get paid directly off of how much people are paying on those ads? You get a percentage of it? Essentially. I mean, I had so no idea. YouTube is a 55 45 split between YouTube and the creator, right? Really? So for every dollar that, that YouTube generates, 55% goes to the creator and they keep 45%. It's the most lucrative platform on the face of the Dude, planet, right? I had right? no idea. Yeah. I, I didn't think people made that much money from ads. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So and are I, you making a decent amount? So, Graham, like, and I'll just shout out Graham, right? Because Graham yeah. posted all over. I know Graham, yeah. right? He's a great dude, like one of the best dudes I've ever met. Um, Graham makes millions and millions and millions of dollars a year just from YouTube ad revenue. It's incredible. Like millions and millions and millions that, of dollars. There's no business yeah. that's better because no. you're not involved in any deals. Yeah. There's no one to please. Yep. You're just making money. Graham right now is probably making like, I, I would say, I'll bet you he's making 20 grand a day net profit YouTube ad revenue alone. No, no sponsorships, no wow. affiliates, no merchandise, nothing. Crazy. Just YouTube ad revenue. Crazy, right? But he's in an, he's in the best niche, a highest paying CPM niche yeah. on the platform of YouTube, and he's one of the most consistent dudes I've ever met in my yeah, entire life. Yeah, and he's he's got right. it. He made his yep. stage on there. He's he not did. going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. Every video he posts, going to get anywhere from two to five hundred thousand views on his main channel, and now he's got the Ice Coffee Hour, um, the Steph Family, which is his podcast or his uh, blog channel. Yep. And then he's all, and then he's got another, and then he's got the Graham Stephan Show, yep. which is a reaction channel, right? So yep. he's completely diversified on the platform, Crazy. you know, and he's getting tens of millions of views a month, right? Yeah. So like people like that, right? Like Value Tainment, Patrick Bet David, um, you know, dudes like that, they're, they're killing the game YouTube ad revenue, yes. right? And then on top of that, everything that comes along with it, right? So I think that we're in the best niche ever on YouTube. And even if it took you and me three to five years to get to that level, it's like absolutely like go all in, right? Because that YouTube is a life changing platform, yes. like literally a life change, like Instagram, is like not like it compared to YouTube, it's nothing, yeah. right? Like TikTok's nothing. Those if you have great. your own businesses, I yeah. feel like that's how you can get the deal closed. You know, exactly. they look you up, it's your resume. Mm -hmm. But YouTube, like you don't even need a business. No. That is the business. Yeah, it's insanity, bro. It's crazy. And, and then from YouTube, you can create any business. Like theoretically, like I've yeah. seen like, I don't know if you've all like Max Tuning, like from like Christian Guzman with Alphalete, one of his buddies okay. is Max Tuning. I don't know him. And he, dude, he's like 400K on YouTube, but like he created a candy company. And he, and like out of, out of the blue, right? He's selling the out of Oh my, tens of millions of dollars, like just blew up because of YouTube. Like, and he yeah. literally talks about it. He's like, yeah, like it's all YouTube, like, you know. Oh my So God. It, it's insane, man. So yeah, dude, so YouTube's absolutely insane. I think that YouTube is absolutely where it's at in the future. Yes. Um, but yeah, dude, like thumbnails, titles, man. And then like, you know, literally jam all the like good stuff in the first like five minutes of the video. Okay. And then the other part of it too, that I've learned with YouTube and I think, and there's a lot of dudes out there right now that I think are really doing this the wrong way in my humble opinion. It, and it depends on your goal on YouTube, right? So like, like, and I'll just use Graham again. As, he's a really good example, yeah. right? Um, Graham makes all fifth grade level content, mm -hmm. right? So he's never talking about like these crazy, this crazy stuff on the platform of YouTube. Everything's very simplified, right? So his title might be like how to become a millionaire by 30 and it'll be five steps. And like the first three is like invest in an emergency fund, open a Roth IRA account and, and read books like, right. Yep. And it's the same content recycled over and over again, because you know, the, the vast majority of people on, on YouTube, really on planet earth, consume uh, content at the fifth grade level. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, I think a lot of people in our niche are on the platform of YouTube, you know, talking about things that go right over people's heads. And there's only a limited number of people on planet earth that can comprehend that information. So your subscriber rate's going to climb at a much slower rate than if you're talking about things at a very broad level. And then maybe you have like a course or something for the more interested people that want to actually like dive deeper into a particular subject. All right, dude, so this has been a phenomenal, phenomenal podcast for everybody watching and listening. I know they've gotten a ton of golden nuggets because I got a ton of golden nuggets. And you know that's something, that's one of the reasons that I started the podcast was selfishly uh, for me, right? And then obviously, 
obviously I knew that I could take that and I could put it out into the universe and everybody else would benefit a lot from it too. So for sure, um, really appreciate you being here. But before I let you go, yeah. what is one thing, man, like, you know, you're, you're 25 now, right? Yep. If you were to go back and you were in a similar situation to where, you know, where you were before, um, you know, maybe just kind of starting out, right? Getting your feet wet, getting going, you know, um, obviously you learned a lot as time went along. What's one thing maybe you would have done differently or you would tell a younger version of yourself to kind of do, you know, back then? Yeah, I think I wouldn't like take anything back from what I did. I think I did everything I needed to do and the mistakes I made were there for me. I mm -hmm. needed to learn the lessons from those mistakes and even they started my businesses yeah. too, as you know. Um, so I would just say like, stay committed and, mm -hmm. and never give up. Like as corny as yeah. that is, right? It's so cliche. It's the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. Like if you do not quit and you work every single day at that goal, um, obviously there's a lot that goes with it. Like you got to break it down, you know, take small little baby yep. steps, get 1% better every day or 0.1% better every day. Um, and, and it all comes with separating yourself. Mm -hmm. Like when I was back in that situation, when I was miserable, you know, I could have just, kept going down the wrong path with drinking yeah. drugs, you know, being depressed, blaming the world. But what I did was like, I, I just asked questions and I seeked answers. Mm. So ask the questions to yourself and then seek, you know, from those questions you're asking. So for me, I was like, how do I find positivity? Yeah. How do I find value and how do I find purpose? I need to go look and seek for those answers from people like you, mm -hmm. from people like Grant Cardone, Ed yeah. Milet, um, people that were already doing what right. I wanted to do. So go find people in your network. And if you don't have a network, create a network. You have mm -hmm. the internet, guys. Yeah. You got YouTube. You're watching this podcast. Like You could literally DM yeah. Austin or DM me and the probability we answer is pretty high. Mm -hmm. So you know, use that tool. And it's limitless, guys. You can do anything with the internet now. Any celebrity mm -hmm. mentor is literally just one DM away. It's yep. it's that crazy. So never give up. Um, just really go for it. And and don't just stick one foot in, one foot out. Like you gotta go all yeah. in, man. You gotta do shit that no one else is gonna wanna do. I do hard shit every single day still. Like you think yeah. this, is, me and Austin made it, right? We're chilling. I'm gonna get done with this podcast, go crush a beer. No, no. like me and you work every day more than most people do still to this day. So like when you find your vehicle, when you find your success, just know when you do have that $6,000 mm. day, that's when you step on the brakes yeah. even more or on the gas <laughs> even more. You got to yeah. just go, 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 never sit yeah. still. And you know, if you can keep that momentum, once you start getting your wins back to the slight edge, like if your habits compound over time and you're doing the right things, your life is literally going to be going parabolic and you're going to start living that life you used to dream about. True. And like, how crazy is that Dude, feeling when you nuts. used to dream about, I know you had a crazy story, yeah. like growing up, you know, with your grandparents mm -hmm. or whatever, and then just going all in at a young age, yep. like, you probably dreamt about, you know, the, this life you're living mm -hmm. right now, every single night, every yep. single day at the gym, whatever. And then it starts to actually take place. And that feeling, man, when you're Dude. literally waking up every day and living your dream, it's still every single second yeah. and every single day. Like I'm sitting in this podcast now, like, holy fuck, I yeah. never would have thought yeah. that I'd be filming a podcast with you mm -hmm. after I was working with you two years ago, yeah. pretty much working for you. And now, yeah. you know, we're having an interview here. So like everything comes it, full circle. It's, yeah. Everything comes full circle and anyone can do it. Like I'm no different than you watching this right now. I just had a dream and I committed to it. I love it, man. I, I, there's literally just like mic drop, nothing else to say to that. Uh, it's just dead on. It's dead accurate. If there's a secret, if you're looking for the secret, you're looking for the magic formula, the magic pill, that's it right there, right? Like it is as simple as that. You can read all the books in the world. You can listen to all the podcasts in the world. You can, you can go and study everybody in the world at the end of the day until you do that right there and take action consistently day in and day out and never give up, never quit and go. Um, it, it's just never going to happen for you until you do those things. So Colin, I appreciate you being here, man. Dude. I know we talked about a lot of different stuff. There was a lot of different services that we talked about yeah. from Walmart automation all the way to, you know, the credit repair stuff and various things that you're, um, that you're doing right now, yep. you know, where uh, I'll probably just go ahead. What I'll do is uh, first and foremost, I'll put your uh, Instagram and everything down below awesome. and your YouTube channel. Perfect. And then also um, I'll have you maybe make a link for me after the fact. And I'll throw a couple of links up on the screen if they're interested. And I'll also include them down below as well for maybe a couple of those other things, just if people are interested. Perfect. And, um, and then if they have any questions, they can comment on the video or reach out to you directly as well. Absolutely, man. So, I'll take care of them. Okay. We'll Perfect. put it all there. And dude, I really appreciate you being here, man. Thank you. Brother. Yeah. Appreciate okay. it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys. Smash that like button. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, bro.